In this video, I'm gonna go over my top 13 Ableton tips that I learned over the years that I wish I knew sooner, rapid fire style, so let's go. Hey yo, what's up? It's Alex from Meta My Music, and as always with this channel, it's my mission to help artists such as yourself produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. And if you're an Ableton user, this video is for you, so get ready for my top 13 Ableton live tips, rapid fire style, let's jump in. All right, tip number one is to use the groove pool, and this can really add some humanness, some real live feel to your programmed MIDI parts, whether it be drums or melodic sequences, it can really help get some feel in your track. So a lot of the time when we're programming ideas, it gets quantized to the grid and then it feels stiff and robotic. So if we take some time to use the groove pool with our program parts to inject some feel into it and get it off the grid to really pulse with the clock in a different way, a more human way, we can really use the groove pool. So if we open up our browser, the groove pool is located here. You can hit this little wave button and it opens up your groove pool. So I have this drum loop that I've loaded up a sample and let's play it. And you'll notice it's got a groove, right? Right, and if we zoom in on this loop, we can see that the hits of this drum loop don't land exactly on the beats and bars, right? They're a little bit ahead or a little bit behind. In this case, it's a little bit ahead of the pulse, which gives it that feel. So in this other track, I have a programmed MIDI drum loop that I've programmed that emulates that sample that we were just looking at. So let's listen to this. Let's stop this one and let's listen to this drum loop. It doesn't really have the same feel, does it? So this is where the groove pool and extracting grooves comes in. So if we open up this sample, we can actually right click on the sample and extract groove right here. All right, once it's in your groove pool, you'll see it appear here in the groove pool. And the magical thing about this is you can open up any MIDI performance, whether it's a drum loop or a melodic sequence, and you can actually apply a groove. And the way you do that is you go over here to the groove section of your clip view, all right? And you're gonna select the groove that's in your groove pool. And right now we only have one, the one we extracted from that sample. And then we can hit this little arrow to commit the groove. So let's go ahead and do that. And now if we zoom into this MIDI track, you'll notice that the hits are now slightly ahead of the beat. We're not landing directly on the beats and bars, giving it a little bit more of that organic feel. And you can also adjust the amount of groove that you're applying to this track. So you can make it the exact copy of what the groove is, or you can inch it slightly towards that groove if you wanted, and you can have some fun playing with this. Another cool thing we can do is you can adjust the velocity, and we can do the same thing. We can select the groove, hit that same groove, and now when we commit, it will also commit the same velocity differences that we extracted from that original groove. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that all of the velocities of all these different hits have changed. Tip number two is using clip envelopes to program in volume automation, effect automation, whatever it may be, all sorts of automation within a clip itself, which is super powerful. So I have this kind of pad sound that's just playing a chord over and over. And let's do some automation in this clip. So to get to your clip envelopes, you just have to click this tab inside clip view and you get to this new menu and here we can actually change the envelopes of all sorts of different parameters the modulation wheel foot controller data entry balance whatever it may be but for now let's go to volume so we can go to mixer and then we can go to track volume so inside this little menu we can actually draw in automation for this clip specifically so if we hit b we can open up our draw tool and then we can pencil in automation in volume for this clip so let's give that a go so let's change the volume of this clip over time and let's play it right you can do this with any parameter right something like this And this can be a cool solution for getting custom pulses, custom kind of sidechain compression without having to use a compressor because all a compressor is doing is basically changing the volume of a track over time. And you can get a lot more precise with this type of automation.
All right, tip number three is to use a chain selector to dry wet anything. So let's say you wanted to use an effect that doesn't have a built-in dry wet control, such as the auto filter in Ableton. Let's say we wanted to throw this on our drum loop here. However, we wanted to have a dry wet control so we control the amount of it, maybe take it out, automate it, whatever we want to do. So what we can do is actually select this device, hit Command G to group it. And once the track is grouped, we gain access to this chain mixer here, okay? And what's powerful is we can actually create multiple chains. So if I right click here and create another chain, now I have two tracks that are playing this drum loop at the same volume. So it's gonna be significantly louder, but the purpose of what we're trying to do is to have one of these tracks with the effect on it and the other track without it so we can blend between the two. So if we hit this chain button, we get this actual menu of being able to select between multiple chains at any given point in time. Okay, so right now this first chain you'll notice has the beat mosaic auto filter loaded and then the second chain doesn't have any effects. All right, so what we can do is actually take these tiny little bars and stretch them out. All right, so what we're gonna do is grab this bar and go to 126. We'll do the same thing for the second chain, but instead we'll start it at one instead of zero so that this chain is starting at zero and finishing at 126. And this chain is starting at one and finishing at 127. And here's the magical part. You see this tiny little bar on top of this blue bar. What we can do is click and drag this to create a slope. Okay. And we can do this the opposite way over here, click and drag to create a slope. And now with this chain selector, we can move between both of these chains as they fade into each other. All right, so let's give this a listen. This is the chain with the effect. And then on this side, the effect is gone. How cool is that? So if we wanted to control this with a knob, all we would have to do is map this chain selector to a macro. So we'll open up our macros here. We'll select the chain selector map to macro one rename this dry wet and voila we have a knob that controls the dry wet of this auto filter fun stuff bonus tip you can actually take this audio effect rack and save it so that you have a dry wet custom rack that you've created for any effect that you want to use this technique on all right, tip number four is using what is called an instrument rack. And this is very much the same principle as the chain selector and the dry wet mix thing that we looked at earlier, but with several instruments. So for example, I have this pad instrument here. So I have this pad loop here. Let's play it. But let's say I wanted to layer another sound on top of this playing the exact same notes with the same automation or if I wanted to audition different types of instruments without committing to deleting this one or replacing this one, we can do the exact same thing. Let's select this device, Command G to group it. Now we have access to a chain selector and let's create a new chain. And on this new chain, we can upload a new instrument. So let's go find a new one. So I've uploaded this new instrument to a second chain and now we have two instruments playing this. Right, how cool is that? And we can actually mix the volume. So let's say we wanted more of the original and just a little bit less of this new layer. We could mix it here. And we can also open up the chain menu and the chain selector here. So what you can do here is select all of your chains. You can right click in here and distribute ranges equally. All right, so once you click this, it will actually distribute the range of instruments you have equally amongst this chain. Right now we only have two, right? We could do the exact same tip where we move these ranges and depending on where the chain selector is, it will be playing that instrument. So at this setting, we're just hearing the first synth. We move it over here, we'll hear the second synth. And if you have a range where they're both selected, they'll both be playing.
this can be super powerful to have a bunch of different instruments onto one single instrument rack and either switch between them to audition a bunch of different ones or use it for live performance. Sky is the limit. All right, tip number five is to have multiple plugin windows selected as on in your preferences. So if we go command comma to open our preferences, if we go to the plugins tab, you'll see the selection saying multiple plugin windows. And by default, this is set to off. However, I suggest you turn it on because let's say you're using a lot of third party plugins and you want to adjust them at the same time. So for example, I have a saturation plugin, a third party one, a sound toys decapitator on this synth. And let's say I also wanted to adjust this Valhalla supermassive delay at the same time. You have to have multiple plugin windows on so that they both stay open so you can adjust them without one closing the other. All right, tip number six is to warp samples at the same time or warp them together. So right now I have our original drum beat and I added in this kind of pedal steel loop. So that's what it sounds like. But let's say we wanted to mess around and warp both of these samples together. So if we wanted to do that, let's select everything. Okay, and then go over here. However, you'll notice that Ableton says four audio clips with different lengths are selected in two tracks. So what we have to do to be able to do this is consolidate them so they're exactly the same length. So the way you can consolidate them is to right click and hit consolidate or learn the shortcut, which is command J. Go ahead and do that. It will consolidate them. And now that they're consolidated and they're exactly the same length, we can actually warp both of these things at the same time. So if we put in a warp marker here, warp marker here, warp marker here, and start stretching this. So notice that as I start stretching this, it's affecting both of these clips at the same time. All right, tip number seven is insert and cut time. And this is a super handy shortcut to know when you're arranging tracks to just save you a bunch of time. All right, so let's say we had this arrangement and we actually wanted all of this to be gone and we wanted this part to enter earlier in the song. Well, instead of having to move everything out of the way or delete this part and then have to drag all this over, instead of having to do all of that, we can just select the amount of time that you want to remove and hit co shift command X is the shortcut to cut time. And it will actually just remove that time instantly and just help you so much to arrange your tracks. At the same time, we can do the opposite and insert time. So we can hit command I and we can type in how many bars of time we want to insert. So let's say we want to insert another four bars of empty space. It will just insert that time into your arrangement, just making it so much easier to add transitions, little parts, whatever's missing for your arrangement. All right, tip number eight is using internal drum rack sense. So what I've done is simply just right clicked on our sample and I converted the drums to a new MIDI track, which is a great other tip. And then we got this MIDI drum loop, which is a MIDI representation of that sample. Sounds like this. But let's say we wanted to play around with send tracks to add some color to this drum rack that we're using now. Um, we can simply go into our chain menu. All right, so with our chain mixer open here, we can go to this little button over here and hit show hide return tracks. And it will pop up this little menu here and we can right click and create a return chain. And then on this return chain, we can throw on, let's say an effect that we want to act as a return channel like a dark snare room. And you'll notice that as soon as I've loaded that, this send column has appeared on all of our chain elements. So now if we go to, let's say a snare sound, we can send this to the reverb. Right, and you can continue to add more return chains as you wish for more effects. All right, tip number nine is recording MIDI effects as well as resampling. So this is super powerful if ever you want to resample something into audio or if you want to print out MIDI effects and edit them farther from there. So let's start with resampling first and foremost. Um, what I've done is I've just moved this over. and Let's say we wanted all of this to be a new audio track altogether. <laughs> All right, just this section. Well, what we could do is just create a new audio track and then we can select resampling 
and now we can record enable it click what we want to record and with resampling enabled it will simply re-record everything that is playing so if you only want to re-record certain things so let's say i didn't want to have um, this original sample i could just turn it off for now and then it won't record to the audio or i could even turn it on and off as i wanted as i'm recording and it will record all of that into a new audio track so let's do that All right, and now let's solo this new audio. So notice that me turning on and off that track was recorded as automation into this audio. And now with this audio, we can play around with it at a whole new level after resampling it. Another great tip is to record MIDI effects. So if I take this pad loop here, let's unsolo this. And let's go ahead and add an arpeggiator on this. So let's go to our MIDI effects, arpeggiator, right? And like select an order that we like. Now we have an arpeggiated sequence being triggered from this MIDI chord. And now what we could do is simply just create a new MIDI track. So shift command T. And now if we wanted to, we could select the input of this MIDI track to be track three. Okay. And now we can record enable it. And it's going to record the MIDI output of that arpeggiator. So let's give that a go. Right, so now if we open this up, we have all the notes of our arpeggiator printed onto a new MIDI track that we can edit if we wanted to. All right, tip number 10 is using custom keyboard shortcuts. So with Ableton, you can actually map any of your computer keys to any button Ableton, which is powerful, but it's worth using. There's a few that I routinely use, one being R for record, the key R, as well as a utility to collapse to mono on the master bus. So you can easily check mono compatibility when you're mixing. Shout out to Seed the Stage for that awesome tip. So for example, let's say we wanted to re-record this and we click here. If we go to key map up here, we can go into key map mode and click on the button you wanna map. So let's click on record, hit R. And just as easy as that, R is now mapped to record. Let's get out of this mode. And now instead of having to click up here to record, I can simply click here, hit R. Awesome, easy as that. Let's show you that other tip real quick. So if you go to your master channel here, your master track, and you go into audio effects, go into utilities, go into utility, and you can map this mono compatibility. So if you turn this mono switch on, it will make your mix mono, and you can map this on and off button to another key. So let's go back to key map. Let's say we wanted to map this to one, and then we get out of key map mode. So now every time I hit one, it will toggle this utility that collapses our whole mix to mono, which is super important to check when you're mixing. All right, tip number 11 is use deactivate, don't delete. And this is a super handy feature for when you're arranging, when you're trying different ideas, you're experimenting with different layers together, and maybe you're unsure if you want to keep something or not. Well, instead of deleting something, you can simply hit zero to deactivate something. All right, so let's say you're arranging a song and you're like, I don't know if I like this part here, but instead of deleting it and potentially forgetting that part, if you decide you wanna go back to it, you can simply deactivate it by hitting zero and then it won't play, but if you want to restore it later, simply hit zero once again and it returns. And keep in mind, this doesn't only work for clips, this also works for tracks. You can deactivate a track just by hitting zero and you can also go into a MIDI clip and you can deactivate notes. So you can actually play around with taking out notes of an arrangement without having to forget or delete what you're working with before. All right, tip number 12 is to consolidate audio clips into blocks to make it easier to work with. So for example, if you have a bunch of tiny audio files that are making up a part, so I just have all these click noises that I've lined up with this drum beat. And let's say you wanted to duplicate this and have it later in your track. So instead of having to make sure that you select everything perfectly to, to be able to copy and paste it like this and make sure you have to click here, right? And instead of having to deal with all that tediousness, once you know that you have a part you like, you can just select them all and hit Command J to consolidate it into one clip to just make it so much easier to navigate and play around with. 
And finally, tip number 13 is to use the zoom features in Ableton as well as opening and closing toggles and get that second nature. All right, so one thing to keep in mind with Ableton is anytime you make a selection, so let's say we select this part and hit the key Z, it zooms into that selection, which is super handy to navigate. You can also hit Z again to open up the track and close it all just with one button. Ableton also has another two handy zoom toggles that you can play around with, one being W, which will zoom you out to the next optimized zoom that Ableton thinks, and you can hit it again to zoom back into where you were. So it's handy for just a quick toggle to zoom in and out from where you're at. And you can also do the same thing with height with H, where it will zoom in and out all of your tracks just for a really quick toggle to make it easy. Right, so this all combined. So if we make a selection and hit Z to zoom in, we can zoom in on the track again with Z, close it, we can hit W to zoom out, select a different section, hit Z, zoom in, zoom out, Z if you wanna open the track and look at it. So learning how to toggle all these things are super handy. And also keep in mind, you can map these two toggles with these two H and W buttons to anything on your MIDI controller if you want something different than your keyboard to toggle that. And hey, if you're just getting started with music production and feeling completely overwhelmed by the whole process, or if you've been at this for a while, but having trouble finishing projects, or hey, if you just wanna get a glimpse inside my personal workflow, I've created a super easy to follow seven step framework that helps you go from your very first ideas, generating ideas, picking the best ones, arranging a song, editing the performance, mixing, mastering, so you can finish more music and get better and better at the whole process as you go through it. It's super handy to have around the studio as a printout. So if you're interested in grabbing that, you can find it in the link below. And that wraps it up for this video. If you got value out of this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay in tune for the next MetaMind Music transmission, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And hey, let me know, what are your top Ableton tips? What are your top tips that you've discovered to help enhance your workflow, your process, unlock your creativity, all of that good stuff? I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. And with that, we will love you and leave you and see you in the next video.